What is up guys? This is Zach and Grayson here on another project out here in Texas and today we're going to be setting up a theater room. The configuration we're doing is a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. As you can see, the customer had this cabinet built out for him. He's got some Bowers and Wilkins fronts as well as a center speaker from his old house. Some Bowers bipoles which we wired last time we were here, right at ear level, around the room. And then he's got some nice, massive SVS subs, which I'm actually pretty excited to hear today. And those are going here and here. We're going to be hooking up a Marantz 8012, and the customer has an Apple TV and a Panasonic Blu-ray. We're going to be using a Sony 295 as well as a Slate Zero Edge screen, the Slate 1.2. You can see here is the projector, the 295, as well as the Slate screen, which we're going to have to assemble. And this particular model does have the backlit LED kit. Uh, we ordered 125 inch, which should fit perfectly in the space here, as long as the customer got the measurements correct. So we're going to go ahead and get this project knocked out, and I'll kind of show you guys uh, as we complete the work. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, this is the Sony 295, the first native 4K projector that Sony has to offer. It says a $5,000 MSRP on it. Great bang for your buck. I'm gonna go ahead and get the mount put on top of this. And start to get everything ready to go uh, to be mounted to the wall. Now, if you guys would like to purchase this projector, make sure you give me a call, shoot us an email. We do have a low price guarantee and nationwide free shipping. We really do appreciate all of the orders that you guys have been placing recently. This is the wall mount that I'm gonna be using today. This mounts to the back of the wall and this piece extends out off the wall and this mounts to the top of the projector like this. Okay guys, so you can see I have my bracket on the top of the TV. Now, I'm going to take this back piece and mount it into the wall, into the studs, and it's going to hang on there just like this. I'm going to drive it in with some lags that they provided. Let's go take a look and see how Grayson's doing. You can see he's already got surrounds up on the wall. Looking good, nice and clean, no wires showing. He's getting that last one in right now, and I'll go ahead and get this projector mounted as well as I'm going to install an outlet for them so everything's up to code and then we're also going to be dropping in HDMI and CAT6. You guys can see I got this back bracket securely installed to the wall right here. I'm into the, the header so there's plenty of support but I threw a couple 75 pound anchors in down below as well. There was a stud over here and a stud here but this is center of the wall so I definitely needed it to be center and it needed to be as high as possible because ideally it would be even higher right at the top of the screen but we're working with what we have based on the room so now i'm going to go ahead and get my projector thrown up here guys these SVS subs are just like enormous this is a product that we are not a dealer of currently but I've had a lot of requests for it from you guys so I'll probably be contacting SVS on getting set up as a dealer um, so just ask me here in the next few weeks about availability on these. I'll also let you know what I think, but um, they have a pretty good reputation online, so I'm interested to hear them today. Okay guys, so I just fished HDMI and CAT6 from the projector to the front of the room using fish tape. There's a Smurf tube that's currently there. Now I'm just gonna relocate power and pull those HDMIs through the wall to this side 
and get everything capped off. It's gonna take me a minute. All right, guys, as you can see, now I have my power as well as my data and HDMI in and I'm gonna mount the projector. And I got my four security screws, which will basically just screw right in. Okay guys, so the next part of this installation is we're going to be unboxing and assembling and then installing the Screen Innovations Slate 1.2 125-inch Zero Edge Pro screen here in the theater room. So Grayson's going to start by getting everything unboxed and laid out, and then we'll start to get it put together. everything unboxed and basically the way the zero edge screen works is you have a outer frame and an inner frame the outer frame is what's decorative the inner frame is what the material actually attaches to so what Grayson's doing right now is just getting the L brackets in place for the inner frame these little guys right here are where the screen actually snaps onto these are just little bumpers that hold it in place. I like the screen innovations. It puts that on at the factory, saves a little bit of time. Um, so you can see there's frames all the way around. This one does have the backlit LED light kit, which comes pre-installed with everything ready to go. Here's everything that's included in the from the hardware standpoint. Here's the other pieces right here. Comes with gloves as well as the mounting hardware just hangs on there like a pitcher and then you got the SI badge as well as the remote and that's everything that's included we're gonna go ahead and get this thing put together and we'll show you a little update as we go but if you look over here in the theater room I just finished getting the projector mounted everything turned out pretty clean I went ahead and popped in the HDMI and cat 6 behind the plate and drilled a hole in it and then the power is on the other side Just like that uh, We're moving along all the front speakers are in as well And the two subs and then all of our surrounds Once you get your frame put together and you're sure that it's nice and square, the next step is to take the screen fabric and stretch it onto these tabs. So you got to separate out your tabs and then stretch it into place and you want to stretch evenly across the whole screen. Okay guys, after you've done your corners and then stretched all the way across throughout the whole screen, snap in your, your corner pieces, then we're going to go ahead and put on the frame, which the frame just snaps right on on all four sides, and then you put the screws in.
Now we just get to extend our LEDs around the screen and we'll stand it up and take a look. Once you get your LEDs around the screen, you cut right on the copper line on both sides and overlap them so that you don't have a gap in the LEDs. That's what Grayson's doing right now. Next part of the installation is to get it mounted up on the wall, which we're going to be mounting it right here. And you can see we already have our power outlet in for the LED RGB kit. We highly recommend that so you don't go against city code and run your high voltage line down through the wall. And I'm also working on getting our Atmos speakers cut in right now. See right over the front row and rear row, we're going to do a total of four in this room here today. Okay guys, moving along, I got my four Atmos holes cut. I avoided all the beams in the ceiling, which is pretty tricky in this particular room. But we're ready to rock and roll, get our wiring put in place. So I'm gonna get all our lines fished back to the termination point here at the front of the room and get these speakers popped in. Bam! Four Atmos in-ceiling speakers wired like that. Not really, it just took me like an hour. But yeah, now we get to pop our speakers then and move on to the next part of this install. That's a wrap on the in ceiling speakers. You can see I got all four of them popped in. And now Grayson's working on getting them toned. So right now you can hear toner's hooked up to our top rear right. We're gonna go through and we're gonna do that on all of them and throw labels on them for the customer. If you don't have a toner, you can pick them up at Home Depot order it online they're about seventy dollars makes your life a lot easier when trying to find your speakers so the next step is i'm going to work on getting the screen mounted this is the mounting hardware here and you can see here on the wall, I've actually marked out where the stud is, as well as where I want the top of this to go, based on my pencil marks. So, I've got studs on both sides that I'm going to mount into, and then we'll get it hung up on the wall. Alright guys, so next we're going to be mounting the screen. You can see I have my two brackets installed into the studs, and we're just going to hook it on there. Get it up here, it's looking really sweet. Let me show you a close shot. looking pretty sharp. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and do our alignment on our projector. up with the alignment it's looking really good you can see I got the projector level 
and my lines are perfect. Have the unit in focus. This is the Sony 295 with the SI 125 inch slate 1.2. This does have the backlit LED kit on there as well. I'll uh, go ahead and get this calibrated, the whole sound system in here, and then we'll do a quick demo for you guys. All right guys, so you can see based on the setup screen, the configuration that we're running here today is a 7.2.4, meaning we have front, left, right, and center, as well as our surrounds for our first row seating, our surround rears for our rear row seating, and then we have four overhead Atmos and two subwoofers. Typically what we'll do, we'll run this calibration setup mic as a good starting point, and then we'll come in and get our crossovers just right, and run a few demos and just see what the customer thinks as well as uh, um, how the system's responding. And then we'll, we'll make an assessment on what needs to be adjusted accordingly. All right guys, another long night. We just finished up this project and everything's looking really sharp. You can see you have our 125 inch screen innovation slate 1.2 gain zero edge pro mounted here on the wall. And we're using the Sony 295 native 4k projector which is mounted to the rear of the room here all of our wiring is hidden in the wall recessed out of sight and then as far as the audio system we're using a combination of customer owned equipment as well as stuff that we supplied we have a Marantz uh, 8012 which is powering up the system down here he has a um, Bowers and Wilkins towers from his old house as well as the center and uh, surround left, right, and rear left, right. So that's the seven channel part. He has two of the uh, 4000 series SBS subs. And then overhead, there's four overhead Atmos, which was just like an off brand that he had purchased. So we do prefer to sell you guys all of the equipment, but it's not necessary. If you have stuff from your old house or your old system that you want to integrate into the system, just let me know. Uh, we do have experience with working with other products other than just the products that we sell. Now, if you guys would like to purchase any of these products, we do have nationwide free shipping and a low price guarantee. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and the orders that you guys have been putting in. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and helpful and you guys building your own home theaters. Now, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below for more. This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching. You're listening to where cinematic audio is bad. These are at negative 10, so like, the calibration assigned very low Because we're so no used to hearing sound this way. Um, so I wanted to overpower your... But what if else. sound could be extraordinary again? Engines are up and burning.